the title of my message is, How Will You Respond? (laughs) How do you respond? How many people know that obstacles come? (laughs) Negativity comes. All kinds of things come. Do you know that? I said earlier, thank goodness it didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Amen. But the good, the bad and the ugly, they all come. It's how we respond that really makes a difference. It matters. There's a man in the Bible, his name was Job, and he had a condition in his life, but his wife just told him, roll over, curse God and die. You know, we've got to be careful who we're listening to, haven't we? But I want you to just have a little look today at, at uh, our life and following Jesus, serving God. And I believe that the, the church life, the best is in front of us, Amen. I believe that God's going to do amazing things through us and that. And this is a story here as found in the book of Mark chapter 16. It says, Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices that they might come and anoint Him. Here's some ladies. They're in the church. They're part of the, the, what God is doing. And they want to do something for God. You know what I find? There's not one person that I meet in church that really doesn't want to do something. Is that correct? How many people really want to do something to please God and do something for God? And here's these ladies there. They've got a, 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 a dream. They're, just, they're, going, they're going to come and anoint the, the body of Jesus. It says very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. But on the way, this is what they said. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? You know, what I find in life is that that's where most people stop. Most people stop with good intentions. Yes, we want to do this. We want to to evangelize. We want to see the sunshine coast one for Jesus. We want to help here. We want to do this. But good intentions never get the job done. Because you see, what I find is obstacles come. Difficulties come. The good, the bad, and the ugly, they all come. And it's how we respond when these things come. And you know, most people just stop there and they say, well, we'd we'd like to be able to go and anoint the body of Jesus with oil, with with anoint Him and so forth, but but who's going to roll the stone away? It's too heavy. It's too hard. It's too difficult. Why bother? Why even try? Friend, I want to say we've got to start getting rid of some wrong thinking. Amen? But you see, there's something that they did that I believe that every one of us should do. It says, but they looked up for they saw the stone had been rolled away. I believe that the answer for our life today and for the church, as true as Smithy was talking there this morning, The church has got a long way to come back, hasn't it? The church has got a lot to answer for. But we, the church, if if you're going to go anywhere with God, if you're going to do anything for God, if if any of us are going to do anything, we've got to keep on heading in the right direction. We've got to keep on heading in the right direction, up and forward, amen? Looking up and going forward. The Bible speaks about if you put your hand to the plow and, and Luke uh, 9, 16, it says, if, and, and take it away, you're not worthy even to go into the kingdom of heaven. Luke 9, 62. I, I believe that, that God wants to open doors that no man can open. These girls, they were, they were heading in the right direction, but don't turn back. Keep your eyes looking forward and, and see if God won't open the door for you. See if God won't make a way for you. See if God won't help you through your difficulties. You see, God opens doors and He shuts doors. God shuts the doors that no man can open. In Genesis 7, 16, there's Noah's ark. And it says there that they went in. Uh, Each one went in. So they entered, male and female of all flesh went in as God had commanded him. And And then the Lord shut him in or the Lord shut the door. There was Peter. He was in a prison. He was about to be most surely executed. 
They'd already put James to death and now it was a popular thing to do this. And so they're going to do some more. He's going to do some extra stuff. But, but here is an angel comes in and, and all of a sudden the door starts springing open. Friend, can I say this? Let's just keep heading forward. Amen. Let's just keep going forward. The Bible also says in verse 6 there of Mark 16, it says, and all of a sudden an angel starts speaking to these ladies as, he's heading, as they're heading in the right direction. Friend, what I've found in life is that God wants to do more than you could even imagine or think. And if God can get you moving in the right direction and you might have a little dream, you might have a little plan, you might have a, a little thought in your mind that this is what I'd like to do. I'd like just to go out there and, and, and you know, we're just gonna anoint the body of Jesus. But I wanna tell you that God had more on His mind than just a little bit of anointing oil, amen. God wanted to open something so dynamic and so powerful. He wanted them to hear from the angel's voice himself, He is risen. He's alive, hallelujah. How powerful is that? God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever imagine or think. That's who our God is. But if we don't stop, if we just keep going forward, friend, don't let the obstacles of life stop you. Don't, don't let the trials of life stop you. And here is this woman, as she's, uh, these women as they're heading there and all of a sudden there's an angel and, and these women were, were terrified, the Bible says. They were, they, they were, they were shaking in their boots because this, this visitation, this angels are now speaking to her, speaking to them and they said, don't seek the living among the dead. He's not here, he's risen. Go tell my disciples he's alive. Go tell my disciples he's, al he's risen. Friend, we've got to keep moving. You've got to keep going on. These women, they could, have, they could have at any point there, they could have said, look, it's gonna be too difficult. It's gonna be too hard. We, we can't even imagine how we're gonna get that stone. Don't even bother trying. But I praise God that they started pressing in. They started moving in. If you keep moving in the right direction, God will make a way where there is no way. God will, God will open doors that no man can open. He'll shut doors that no man can shut. What an amazing Saviour we have, amen. In verse 10 it says, So these women, they went and told those who had been with Him as they mourned and wept. You see, the Bible says that they did not believe. Why? Because they had allowed the negativity, they had allowed the discouragement of the moment to consume them. It's very, very easy to allow the moment that you're living in to consume you. We've got to look beyond. We've got to keep pushing through. We've got to press on. We've got to go beyond. We've got to break the strongholds that, that stop us from going somewhere. They did not believe that all of a sudden they were so full of negativity, full of discouragement, and it, it just wiped them out. You see, an encounter with God is what the church needs. We need a visitation. We, we need a, a move of the Spirit. We, we need, friend, to, to hunger and thirst for, for something dynamic. Start to continue to push in and continue to believe. I'm not moved by what I see. I have to be moved by what I know. I cannot be moved by, by, the, by the murmuring and the talking that you hear, the negativity, the failure, the defeat. I've got to believe what the Word of God says. I've got to somehow or other hang, harness myself to that. These guys were mourning and weeping, but an encounter with God will bring them back on track. Whether it be a rebuke, whether it be a visitation or whatever, the Bible says in Romans 2, 4, 4 it says, it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of God that leads us back to Him. It's the goodness of God. And these guys here, we know that, that this mark really condenses this story so much. It, it just, it, it seems like as if he just upbraided them and all of a sudden they went out. But we know that there was encounters. We know that these guys, that, that they were still full of unbelief even after they'd heard of ones that had seen Jesus. They still didn't believe. Peter said, I'm going fishing. I've had enough of this. I'm, I'm out of here. The rest of the disciples said, I'm coming with you. But we've heard a lot tonight, today about the goodness of God, haven't we? We've heard a lot about how great is our God. Friend, never get your eyes off how good God is. 
Never get your eyes off how merciful God is. Never get your eyes off how wonderful our God is, amen. You might be bad and you might've done bad things, but I wanna tell you, His good will overcome and will triumph over bad, hallelujah. It will overcome and it will, it will just swallow up the negativity of our weaknesses. Because God has got a plan. And He said, I'm gonna build my church that the gates of hate will not prevail against. Never be put off. Never, never allow those negative thoughts or whatever it might be to consume you and put you away. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And we know there that Jesus revealed Himself as they came back from their fishing trip and they'd caught nothing. And He said, have you caught anything, boys? And He was already cooking fish. <laughs> the fishermen of fishermen, Amen. We're gonna have some chats up there in heaven when we get up there about fishing, amen. But friend, here he's already got the fish cooking and, and he spoke to the boys and he says, hey, cast your net on the other side for a catch. And we know there, there was great fish caught and he, he said to the boys, bring a couple more over and we'll have a good feed. Have a good feed. We, we know that Jesus revealed Himself. He showed Himself. He, 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 he let them know who He really was and they had an encounter with God. Friend, can I say this? Just going to church and singing a few songs is not good enough. There's something there where man and a woman has to really open themselves up to allow the King of glory to come in. We've got to somehow or other get out, put ourselves under the spout where the glory comes out. We've got to somehow or other open our hearts up to the Word of God and, and allow the Word of God to, to get inside us and, and somehow or other bring that life to us. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of God that leads us back to God, amen. Keep going forward. Paul expressed it so well. I want you to have a look with me in Philippians. Amazing verses of Scripture here. Philippians uh, 3. This is what he said in verse 12. It says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. Some Turn to somebody and say, I want to press on. I press on. I'm trying to find my place. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold on me. That I may lay hold on that. Brethren, I do not count myself as to have apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. He, 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 I believe he, he just expressed it so well. The church must keep on pressing towards what God has said about the church. He never says, I'm gonna have a bunch of losers. He said, I'm gonna have a bunch of victorious people. I'm gonna have a bunch of people that are not slaves, but I'm gonna have a bunch of people that are gonna rule and reign in life. I'm gonna have a bunch of people that are overcomers. The church must keep on pressing in. We must keep on pushing through to, towards what God says about the church, not what the world says about the church, not what failure people say about the church, not what negative people say about the church, but what God says about the church, amen? God says a lot of good things about the church. I believe the sleeping giant called the church is rousing itself out of a deep sleep regarding the supernatural power of God. It is not by might, it is not by power, but it's by my spirit. The true church, which is the body of Christ, is awakening. I believe it is awakening. He, he told His disciples, these signs will follow those that believe. In my name, they will. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will lay hands on the sick. I believe there is a stirring that's going on at the moment. Are you being stirred, friends? Are you being, or are you just settling down and, and just wanting the, the peace or, or whatever it might be? Another cup of coffee, another 
vanilla slice. <laughs> but I believe that there's a stirring going on on the inside. There's a, a stirring going on. Men and women from all walks of life and nations are starting to experience what God said through the prophet Joel. And he said this, he said, it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Put up your hand if you're all flesh today. You fleshly people. No, <laughs> must be all spirit. <laughs> Upon all flesh, amen. I believe that this prophecy is being fulfilled today. I believe that God is doing something dynamic. There is a driving force. There is something in the realm of the Spirit. There's a driving force, friends, that's stirring again the church. I believe it's the Holy Spirit. I believe it's the Holy Spirit. It's causing a hunger a realisation that there's more. Unfortunately, so many people have set, settled for the less. They've settled for just the status quo. They've, they've settled for what we call today church life, church attendance. But friend, I wanna tell you there's more. In the early charismatic days, there are people from all walks of life, Methodists, Presbyterians, Catholics, Baptists, Calathumpians. I don't know who they were, but there was something stirring on the inside of them that caused them to go after God, that caused them to seek after God. I've heard story after story after story of men and women that, that, that were just hungry for God. They might've been in their bedrooms. They might've been from a Methodist or a Baptist or a some other group of people not knowing much about some of the Scriptures, but just standing in the presence of God and saying, God, I want more of You. I'm hungry for a revival. I'm hungry for a move of Your Spirit. And as they hungered and thirst, all of a sudden they were filled with the power of God. Amen. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Many of them had never heard of it. They didn't even understand what was going on. We've got a whole generation of kids today that have grown up in the church, that in Pentecostal churches that have never ever been introduced to the Holy Spirit. We've got young people today that, that, that are so disillusioned with the church. I, they're, they're in a backslidden state. And to be honest with you, I, I take all the responsibility because it's not theirs, it's ours. We've let them down because we haven't displayed and we haven't manifested and we haven't shown the true relationship and the true love of God. We have a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. But there's a stirring, there's a hunger. I remember when I first got saved and uh, there, was that, there was that hunger in me to, to find God. I, I, I'd never been to church in my life. I think that was the greatest advantage that I had. I hadn't been taught all the wrong things, but I, I got saved and, and something happened to me. I, I felt different. I, there was something, I got saved in a Methodist church. But I asked Jesus to come in and help me. And He did. And I got excited and I started reading the Word. And, and, and I, I, I only, all I wanted was to get water baptised. I spoke to my wife, who was a, a, a backslidden Methodist. <laughs> But she knew enough about it to say, I'm not going to one of those churches. I'm a Methodist. And that's it. How many know God's bigger than all of us? God has ways. His ways are not our ways. But He spoke to Nancy through a, through a girl that she'd met at school and saw the change that was in this kid's life that she hungered and swanted something else and this kid was getting water baptised this night. They made an altar call that night and Nancy was the first one out there. The next night, the, the pastor said, I, I just fear to leave the water in the baptismal font. I don't know how many of us got stewed in there that week, <laughs> that month. There was about six weeks in a row, I think. It must have been pretty bad by the end, all them dead bodies in there. But the pastor came to see us the, the next day or something like that. And, and, and as he was talking to Nancy and as he was sharing with Nancy, and he, he started to pray for her. The power of God hit, this, hit Nancy and she just slipped off the chair. I've never seen anybody slain in the Spirit before. She just got slipped off the chair under, under the power of God. 
The poor pastor sat at our table to eat dinner. I didn't have a clue what was going on. I'm as, we're as raw as you could ever be. And we're just sitting there and the pastor's sitting there and, and the power of God was like, he couldn't eat his lunch. He said, I've never felt the power of God like this. We didn't know what, we hadn't, didn't have a switch. We didn't have a pulley. We'd, we just, we didn't know what was going on. Just a few hungry people. Just hungry people. We went to the church Second time Nancy had been to this church, we went in there to get water baptised. Bunch of the Methodist people came with us to see what was going on. Nancy came out of the water speaking in other tongues. She'd never heard of other tongues. She, I told her she could talk underwater, but anyhow. <laughs> she was obviously talking before she come out. <laughs> but she never stopped talking. She just kept talking. She kept talking and talking in tongues. I wasn't very, I was saved, but not that much saved. <laughs> I, I just wanted to smoke. <laughs> and they gave me the baptismal thing certificate and I started rolling it up like a smoke. <laughs> I had me the biggest cigarette I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and Nancy's trying to tell me not to roll the baptismal certificate up in the thing. <laughs> I was ready to light her up. I was ready to go. <laughs> hey? She was talking in tongues and she was trying to tell me not to do that in tongues. We went home that night. I got wet. <laughs> I got water baptised. It was great. Nancy got the Holy Ghost. We went home that night. I got, we got beside our bed to say our prayers. <laughs> I said, thank you, Jesus. Blah, blah, blah. One and a half minute headache prayer. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> An hour later, Nancy still, she prayed for every Chinese person that lived in China. <laughs> she prayed for everybody that ever, ever, ever. <sighs> she then started to remember aunties that, that I don't think she remembered. <laughs> Most already prayed for you guys. <laughs> She was praying for everything and anything that could move and anything she could remember. About an hour later, I crawled back into bed and I went to sleep. <laughs> what do you think God's looking for? We hadn't attained. We weren't perfect. We, weren't, we were just hungry, amen? And God wants to feed hungry people. Did we have all our doctrines? Did we have all our philosophy? Did we have everything up and... No, no, no. I thought I'd have to be a smoking Christian. God said, no, but I want you to be on fire. Amen, not smoking. <laughs> There's a driving force, amen. I'm, I, I believe He wants to get inside us. He wants to do something in it. Cause a hunger. I believe that the Holy Spirit's mission on this planet is not complete until He's created in every one of us an everlasting and an increasing passion for Christ to get close to Him, to get near Him. Charismatic move, I believe, all people from all over the place. I believe God is getting our attention again by His Spirit. Those who step out style stop to inquire. Those that, those that want God, I believe that God is going to use in this great end of harvest. Don't just think that, hey, we're going to, we're going to. No, I tell you what, God is looking for a bunch of people who want God more than anything else. The, the disciples thought it was all over. They're weeping and they're mourning. But the promise of the Father was on its way. I want to say to you today, the promise of the Father is on its way. Whatever God says He's going to do in this hour, it's on its way. It's coming, amen. Moses, the great deliverer, his, his purpose was asleep. He had lost hope. He's on the backside of a desert watching over his father-in-law's sheep. But the promise of the father was on its way. 
He most surely wouldn't have had a clue. He was just there, most surely in his mind would have said, my God, if only I hadn't have done this. If only, how many of you have said that? If only I hadn't have done this. If only. If only. But friend, I want to tell you, you could be in that state, but I want to get your attention. The promise is on its way. Whatever God says about your life, it's on its way, amen. God is gonna build His church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. God's gonna have a people on this planet called the church, amen. And we're gonna triumph over the devil, ruling and reigning. Father and Lord, sheep. But the promise of the Father was on its way. Came in a strange way in the form of a burning bush. The great awakening. Or when the saints go marching in. When the saints go marching in. Oh, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. I don't want to be a spectator. I don't want to be one that's watching from afar off. I don't want to be one of those ones that are out there. I want to be one of those ones that are sitting on his lap. Hallelujah. I want to be one of those ones. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Come on, sing it again. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, the saints go marching I saw Jordan's eyes roll then. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. When the saints go marching in, amen. Just keep moving forward. Just keep looking up. I believe something is happening. There's a noise in the valley. The Bible says, behold, there was a great noise in the valley and a great shaking. shaking. And there stood a mighty army ready to go, go and do the will of Almighty God. That's Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, 14 says, I will put my spirit in you. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. I believe God's got great things, amen. Good things are gonna happen. Just keep moving forward and looking up. Uh, God has amazing things up ahead for us. The burning bush. God uses the supernatural act to get Moses' attention. Moses still had the right to choose. And that's where many of us start to reminisce and start to go through things. But anybody with half a brain would never start a church at 70 odd years of age. (laughs) Shakabundi. (laughs) Keep moving forward, keep looking up, keep believing God. There's a supernatural manifestation. God wants to cause something to burn within us. You've got the right to choose. Times like this, we start to remember the hardships, problems. Start to remember all the things you shouldn't remember. (laughs) And sometimes they overtake the good. And they bring a negative attitude. That's why I believe that we've got to be able to somehow or other keep talking about the good things. Keep talking about what God has done, how good God is. There we might have gone through some hardships. Yeah, you might have gone through some trials. Come here, girl. There's something that I believe is going to get broken over your life today. 
you do not understand the power of your testimony. You do not understand. Yes, yes, yes. But a hundred years from now, I'm going to tell you, it'll be in the past. And all you'll have is your future. All you'll have is that which is going on and on and on and on. People that have been released, people that have been delivered, people that have been set free because the enemy's come in and he's tried to destroy and he's tried to even destroy your life. He's even just tried to destroy that which is around you. But you have held firm and you have had a choice. Yes, sometimes there you waver. Sometimes, yes, you hang back. Sometimes, yes, you allow it because it's so heavy and it's so strong. But I want to tell you, Greater is He right now who is within you than He that's within the world. And the greater one is going to come with a mighty power and a mighty force. And He's going to raise you up and He's going to set you free. It's time where we start to think, oh yes, and all that. But friend, I want to tell you, it's not a time to think like that. It's a time to think you've got a choice. And there was a thing there that sometimes when, when we, there are many today that have preached the gospel, ran crusades, run massive churches that today are away from God. Moses was this man that, there was a man that, that God had raised up from a baby, protected him as a baby to be a great deliverer, to deliver the people of Israel. But here he is now, he's a murderer. He, he, he's, he's far from his call. He's far from where God wanted him to be. Has this man, has he lost all interest in God and the supernatural? You know, there are a lot of Pentecostal churches today that have lost interest in the supernatural. We've got to remain, there's got to come a voice. I praise God that all over the world, there is a voices all over the world. There are bunches of people. God's got His remnant. God's got His people that are declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord of all and speaking about the supernatural power of God and pulling down all the strongholds and the lies. And I believe that we're going to see a great demonstration of the anointing and the power of a living Christ. Amen. Amen. No man is going to get the glory. Still had the right to choose. Has he lost all interest in God and the supernatural? Has he forgotten the call of God? Did he know the call was still on his life? That he had a divine destiny? I believe Moses answered these questions when he said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. I believe that we're living in a day when the world has got so much in the church that the church has become so worldly and the world has become so churchy. We don't know what's right. I believe God's looking for people that'll say, I'm gonna turn aside. I'm gonna put some effort into seeking God. I'm gonna find this God. I'm gonna meet with this God. Moses really said this, I will turn aside and see this great sight. I will not ignore it. I will not laugh at it. You know, today there are people that are laughing at people there that are hungry for God and wanting the supernatural presence of God around their life, wanting to see people set free, wanting to see people healed, that they'll go on fast and pray, do things, to try to help people. He said, I will not deny it. I will investigate it. I will turn aside and see. The Bible says, when the Lord saw that he turned aside, he spoke to him. You know that this was the first time that God spoke to Moses in 40 years. Amazing, isn't it? Not only did he speak, but he empowered him for his destiny. Moses thought he had missed his opportunity, his destiny. Instead of his deep desire to see people saved, there was something else going on in his life. There was that desire once to see people set free from slavery. Now 
He's on the backside of a desert. There was nothing he could do about it. He was now a murderer and a deserter. What hope was there for him? One of the greatest tragedies of humanity was that he accepted where he was and said, that's it. And just accepted it for 40 years. He didn't understand Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. It says the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. God breathed again on this old man and the life of the spirit that was in him came to life again. How many people want something to come alive again in you? I believe the church will again be ignited with the power from above that will quicken the spirit man on the inside. That Ephesians 3.19 may be fulfilled, that we may know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God, that the church will again function in the fullness of Christ. Amen? Will we ignore it? Will we rise to the challenge? I was thinking of Mary and the different women that were going there to anoint the body of Jesus. And it says that they started to talk among themselves and had a little bit of a chuckle to myself as I was preparing I thought that was the, that's the committee. <laughs> Praise God, we don't have that sort of committee. There's a lot of committees out there where the pastor wants, wants to do something for God, but the committee looks and says, oh, we can't do that. It's going to cost too much money. Going to do this, going to do that. Going to take away my Saturday afternoons. I'd have to do such and such for that to happen. And so we get talked out of it. I believe that there are people here and you know, you know that there's something stirring on the inside of you. There's something stirring, something stirring there that's, you can't really get a hold of it. A little bit like this thing that I've got. The side of my face is all numb. But it feels like I've got things crawling up and down my face. I slap it, but it hurts. <laughs> I can't get hold of it. I think they call it neuralgia. But you've got something that's running around inside you. <laughs> it's stirring. There's a stir. I believe that. Oh, I believe that there's a call of God on so many of your lives. I honestly believe that there's a call of God. And you might have been your own committee. You might have been your own thing. And you've looked at it and you said, oh, I don't want to do that. If I did that, I wouldn't be able to do this. And if I did that, I wouldn't. But I want to tell you. God won't let you go. But he also won't always strive with you. And I believe that I'm here at my age pastoring a church because others have said no. Because others have said no. Young men, strong men said no. Don't say no. Say yes. To that itch, to that scratch, to that stirring. I, I'm, friend, I wanted to, I'm, I'm not here to play church. I'm here to stir us to become champions. Amen. Is that okay? I'm here to stir every one of us to become a champion. Don't just be a whatever 
Be a champion. Be a champion for Jesus. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. I'm not going to have an altar call today because I believe every one of us would, should be on it. And I'd only be disappointed if you didn't come. <laughs> But I just want you to lift up your hands. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, my God. Anoint me with fresh oil. Fill me, Spirit of God. Ignite again, oh, the dreams of my youth. Ignite again, my God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.